What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie to 988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. And I wanted to make a video talking about something you guys have been talking about quite a bit lately. And that's the way my legs appeared in the videos I made with Jesse and, and, and other stuff. Uh, my Thanksgiving Francis video. A lot of you guys pointed that out and it made me feel pretty self-conscious. So if it's all right, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to show them off, I think, today. I'm going to show them off a little bit because I want to talk to you about what happened. These are my feet, uh, these are my legs, and this is what they look like. This is what my giant old gross looking foot looks like. Um, this is what my right foot looks like. Very, very swollen all the time. Then you have the weird discoloration here on the leg. Sammy, I'm trying to film. And if you can see right here, it's much darker on this side. It's hard to tell with this light, but they're much darker on this side because I uh, am actually fighting off some infection right now, cellulitis, and I'm taking antibiotics. Uh, to beat that, so that kind of sucks, but uh, let me show you why. Now, every time I show off those legs or they're seen in the video, people always freak out. They're like, look at his feet, look at his legs. Is that what fat people's legs look like? No, it has nothing to do with me being fat. Uh, me being fat makes the situation worse, but not every fat person's legs look like that. Somebody who's been my size even their whole life, chances are their legs are gonna look fairly close to normal. Well, okay, maybe not normal, maybe fat. But still, I mean, normal fat. So some people will, will then guess that it's because I have bad circulation and that's kind of right. Other people think it has to do with congestive heart failure and that maybe my heart's giving out. That, that's a fair guess, but I actually never hear anybody guess what the problem actually is, so I, I want to talk about that. When I first started having problems with my legs, I was like 24 or 25, and what happened was I ended up slamming my left leg in a car door, leaving this huge indent uh, that possibly could have needed stitches, Unfortunately, I had no access to medical care as a very young, very poor, uninsured American. Um, so I just kind of nursed it back to health. And eventually, it did end up getting infected. And when it got infected, the doctors didn't really know what to do. The doctors would give me antibiotics and it would kill the infection, but the infection would come back over and over and over again. The swelling in that leg was isolated to that leg and it had to do with the infection. Uh, but no matter what we did, we could not get the swelling to go down. It continued to get worse and worse. They tried wrapping it in ACE bandages. They had me set in a whirlpool filled with Epsom salts over and over again. They had me buy a home bath whirlpool. Uh, you know, and they did just about everything they could, uh, but for whatever reason, they went undiagnosed for several months and I walked around for, I think, three or four months with an infection continuously reoccurring in this leg, and I was absolutely miserable. It would actually literally ooze lymph, and nobody could figure out what that was. So at one point, one night, I was just feeling particularly sick and decided to lay down and go to bed, and I slept for about three days uh, before I woke up again in the emergency room. I don't know how I survived. I don't know why I survived, but what it turned out is I had gone septic. And I have some short little glimpses of what happened here in those three days. I remember having a, a nightmare about the X-Files. I think the X-Files movie had just come out. I remember my roommate trying to wake me up and my friend Phil dragging me to the emergency room. And then, of course, I remember waking up in a hospital bed. Now, this is pretty scary. And we were talking about some very intensive care. What had happened is over those three days, I had gone what is known as septic which meant my actual blood and my bloodstream was infected with that bacteria. Uh, they had run what they called a pick line from my arm all the way into my heart, and they were pumping the strongest antibiotic they could use directly into my heart to keep me alive. Eventually, a nurse explained to me what had happened is that the wound on my left leg had finally necrotized. Uh, they unwrapped it so that I could see it, and there was a huge black hole all the way down to the bone on my left leg, it looked like it was all the way down to the bone, right about that size, dead in the center of it. Apparently, the reason that infection had reoccurred is because the meat underneath my skin had begun to rot. That's what the lymph drainage was, that's what the smell was, and it wasn't until I finally went septic that it presented in a way that we could see it. So they worked to beat the infection for the next couple of weeks. They managed to finally knock it completely out of my system, and that's when they sent me to wound care for the first time. We had uh, one of the best wound care centers in the world here in Northwest Arkansas. All of our medical care is amazing here, cutting edge stuff. But this wound care center happened to be one of the leading ones in the country. And without them, I don't think I would have been able to keep my leg at all. There was a doctor over that wound care center, and I only ever spoke with him twice. Uh, instead, I worked with the nurses three, four, five days a week for the better part of the next few months. I forget exactly how long it took to finally heal that wound. 
Uh, but during the very first meeting with that doctor, he told me that amputation was a, a consideration and a consideration that I should probably actually choose. He said the amount of damage that I had done to that leg would cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt to repair if they could repair it at all. He said chances are the infection would come back while they were trying to repair that leg and that the leg was permanently damaged with a condition called lymphedema and that if I would choose to keep the leg, even if they were able to heal it and he wasn't entirely sure they would, it would cause me problems for the rest of my life. Now lymphedema is basically a swelling in the hands or arms or legs and feet and it's caused by a insufficiency in the lymph system. It generally presents in cancer survivors who've had their lymph nodes removed or they've had their lymph nodes killed by the chemo. Um, it doesn't normally present in somebody like me. Now, lymphedema is a permanent condition. It is not curable, but it is treatable. And if you're very, very diligent about it, you can definitely save the limb or keep it around for a really long time. Getting diagnosed with this in my mid-20s was pretty frustrating, but I still wanted to keep the leg. Now, as we treated this leg and tried to heal that wound, it was a very stubborn wound. And for the first few months, just showed no sign of, of working. Uh, but the people at that wound care center did some brilliant stuff, including learning new uh, drainage techniques, cutting edge stuff, cutting edge stuff that they'd never done before. They did it specifically to save my leg. And I'm glad to say that we eventually were able to get it to heal and we were in the clear. That's when I saw that doctor for the second and final time, and he said, uh, wow, my ladies did a really good job. I'm really proud of them. And he said, you will regret me not taking this leg. Uh, you know, it's going to cause you no end of problem, and statistically speaking, it will be the thing that kills you if you do not take care of it every day for the rest of your life. I'm not going to lie, all of that medical debt, like hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical debt, uh, that kind of sucked too. My To this day, my credit score is still, nope. Tried to buy a new car once. They checked my credit and uh, the machine that they checked it on just started laughing. Fortunately, uh, the, the, the the maintenance for this stuff is, is a pain in the ass, but it's not that bad. I get to wear these compression style socks all the way up to my uh, knees and I have to wear them fairly frequently, especially when I travel, especially if I'm getting in a plane, especially if I'm gonna be in a car for any extended period of time. And then even if I'm not, I'm just going to be at home. I still have to wear them several days a week. In addition to that, my legs have to be elevated uh, either equal to my heart or above my heart for a minimum of 12 hours a day, ideally 16 to 18 hours a day. Uh, I'm supposed to be in a laying position for the majority of the hours in a day, but at a minimal, I have to do that for at least half of the time. If I don't, the swelling gets completely out of control. Now, for the most part, throughout my life, I've been really, really good about taking care of my legs because I did not want to get sick again. Unfortunately, there would be periods of time in my life where I would get stubborn and I would only, only sleep eight hours a day. I'd only want to keep my legs up for eight hours a day or I wouldn't want to wear the socks because they're very, very uncomfortable and make it very, very difficult for me to walk because of the pain. It makes me grumpy and turns me into an asshole because of the pain of these socks. So sometimes I would neglect my legs and every time I did, I always paid for it. Once or sometimes twice per year, I will get in another infection in these legs. And if I wear my socks and if I keep my legs up and I go to the clinic early enough and I get antibiotics, that will go away. It won't catch hold. Sometimes I did not do that correctly. And when I did not do that correctly, it would eventually spread, making me septic. And each time that happened, it became more and more difficult to repair the legs. It eventually spread into the right leg. The right leg got an infection. And now it's just as bad as the left originally was. Um, and I continue to have these infections several times a year, several times every four or five years, like clockwork, I ended up in the hospital septic all over again. In fact, I guess I'm a couple of years due now. Uh, the, the next time I went septic, that's when it spread over to the right leg. And now the right leg is just as bad as the left. Uh, the next time I went septic, I, I just, just hospital, hospitalized for a little while, but that's what caused my feet to get real weird. Uh, the last time that I was hospitalized, uh, I lost 90% of the skin on the left leg from the knee to the ankle. I, I, I hate to disgust you, so you may want to cover your ears for this, but the skin simply died. And since I was too heavy for them to operate on me uh, on a surgical table, they just basically debrided it in the, 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 the hospital room. And they used these gauze to just scrape off the dead skin. And it was, I swear to God, it was like watching somebody dip nachos into nacho cheese. It was disgusting and excruciatingly painful. I did have pictures of that at some point. I don't think they're, I think they're too graphic for YouTube to be frank. Uh, so I wouldn't share them anyway, but I actually got to see what was underneath the skin layer. I got to see the porous material that the lymphedema creates. And basically this, the, the meat under my skin 
It's a sponge. It's now just a giant sponge. It's super weird to look at. But you see, here's the thing, and this is the point of my video. When a lot of people see my legs, they see uh, diseased, neglected legs that are falling apart, and they think I'm a disgusting, diseased individual who's neglectful and doesn't care about his health. And I understand. I understand how you arrive at that. I understand why you might feel that way when you see these legs out of context. But from my perspective, it's a very different story. I see these legs as a success story, and so would that wound care doctor, and so would those wound care nurses. And I can tell you right now, if I were to phone him up, he would say, I can't believe you've kept those legs for almost 20 years. It's a miracle that you've done it. You must have taken very, very good care. You must have done explicitly what we told you to do every day. And I'm proud of that. And hell, they're ugly and they hurt and they make it almost impossible to walk. And when they swell, when we travel, they swell like crazy. And I have to use one of those stupid little scooters because I can't stand up on the damn things. They're, they're not great legs, but they're the only legs I'm ever going to get. And while they're ugly and while they don't work very well, I'm really proud that I still have them. And you know, I think all of this taught me a lesson and I hope that I teach it to you on this YouTube channel all the time. And that's the simple fact that if you can stop and learn and, and see things from somebody else's perspective, you can really gain a lot of knowledge, a lot of interest, a lot of empathy for other people. And every person you see, every person you pass by, every person you see on the internet, me, you, and everybody else, we are people who are just as rich and invalid and, and, and important as, as you. All of us are just as real and just as important and just as valid. And if you can stop to learn a little bit about your fellow man, it can be actually really, really rewarding for both of you. And I think, I think that's a good thing to do. And I hope that you choose to do that. I try to do it every single day. And I know a lot of you are thinking, well, Boogie, if you lose the weight, will the condition go away? And like we said at the beginning of the video, it is uncurable, but losing weight will make it help. And I'm lost quite a bit over these last few months. It's the first holiday season I didn't gain, but I lost instead. And I'm pretty damn proud of that too. And while it'll always be there, it'll always be painful, and it'll always be unsightly, hopefully they'll be uh, less painful, they'll look a little bit better, and uh, they'll be a little, a little easier to use as I get this weight off of me. And so we just keep working on that, hoping every single day. But if, if that never happens, I'm still just grateful I kept them. All right, guys, uh, that's one man's opinion. I could be wrong. I'd love to read your comments on this one. Guys, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I'll speak with you again soon. I knew I was going to make this video one day. I just didn't know it was going to be today. I'm glad I did, though. Hope you enjoyed it.